Hello and welcome to this uh, 24th lecture of Microsystems Fabrication by Advanced Manufacturing Processes. Um, you had uh, the following things covered in your last lecture. One was the variation of melting temperature depth with uh, crater volume in EDM processes. Uh, we also covered um, the role of cavitation in material removal particularly uh, because of the formation of plasma uh, within the EDM there is a tendency of um, a low pressure region to be created which actually drives away most of the material and is responsible for most of the material removal uh, in the EDM process. We also uh, considered the role of melting temperature uh, in the MRR uh, material removal rate and then we discussed some basic principles of EDM circuits. Uh, for example, the resistance capacitance uh, relaxation circuit, the, uh, the circuit uh, uh, was uh, very uh, briefly analyzed also mathematically as well. We also had the rotary impulse uh, generator type circuit and then we had this solid state control pulse circuit, uh, the three main circuits of EDM which uh, and their various operation principles. We also covered a detailed analysis particularly of this resistance capacitance relaxation circuit and just like to go through once more before starting. So, basically this is the figure of the resistance capacitance capacitor relaxation circuit as uh, you can see here. There is one part of the circuit here which is the charging circuit and similarly the other part here given by the dotted line is the discharging part of the circuit. The idea is that there is an operating voltage which feeds the charging circuit and there is a central capacitor which is the only electrical connection between the charging and the discharging side of both the circuits. And so, this actually is a RC network as can be seen with a variable resistor and uh, the capacitor charges in one cycle and then discharges based on this gap potential which is there between the tool and the workpiece in the EDM tank. Uh, the electric discharge machining tank. So, we found out that using some RC uh, modeling, RC circuit modeling that uh, this uh, V C corresponding to the maximum power transfer is actually uh, 72 percent of the operating voltage. Okay. So, the, the operating point of the capacitor or the capacitor voltage is only about 72 percent and that corresponds to the maximum power you can see here in this particular figure with respect to the time constant you are actually plotting voltage and you can see that corresponding to this point right here 72 percent of the operating voltage you have the maximum power and simultaneously calculations were made uh, doing that. Now, uh, if we really want this power to be fully delivered on to the discharging part of the circuit we should somehow be able to equate the breakdown voltage of the dielectric medium between the tool and the workpiece to this uh, op the 72 percent of the uh, V operating or V O uh, voltage of the charging part of the circuit. So, uh, therefore, for maximum power delivery through the gap and the breakdown voltage should be equated to the supply voltage of the capacitor. In other words, V0 is tentatively equal to 0 0.72 VO, VB, I am sorry, the breakdown voltage VB is equal to 72 percent of the operating voltage. So, current in the discharging circuit can also be evaluated by using the Ohm's law. If you just go back one slide and see what the discharging circuit is like you have really um, this part this dotted part 
uh, of the circuit as a discharging circuit. So, you have an operational voltage 72 percent of the uh, V O or the charging voltage in the capacitor. And uh, if you apply Ohm's law here in this particular circuit, the I D that is the current across the discharging circuit uh, also can be written down as minus d q by d t which is minus c v c t by d t. V c t is the temporal voltage of the central capacitor. If you apply the Ohm's law, the total current in the discharging circuit is nothing but this V C T by the total resistance cut take total resistance R s which is this resistance of the discharging side. So, the V C T by R s becomes equal to minus C V C T V C T by D T and so we try to integrate this in time and see what is the outcome. So, d v c t by v c t is actually equal to minus of t t by r s c integrate both on time we get natural log of v c t comes equal to minus t by r s c plus integration constant we call this k 3. So, let us find out what this k 3 is. So, at time t equal to 0 we already know v c t is actually equal to 72 percent of the output the, the input voltage or the operating voltage and we call this uh, the v c o. Okay. So, this is corresponding to the value of v c at time t equal to 0. And so, if we put this back into this equation here corresponding to t equal to 0, we get l n v c o is equal to k 3. In other words, v c t can be written down as v c o e to the power of minus t by r s c. Therefore, the relationship on the discharge side of the circuit is simplistically given by the charging voltage on the capacitor a central capacitor equals the charging voltage on the central capacitor at ab initio before the discharging process happened uh, times of exponential minus t by r s times of c. C is the capacitor uh, the capacitance on the capacitor and r s is the total resistance of the discharging circuit. So, as we know that you know uh, V C T is already defined. So, we can find out I D again which we initially defined as V C T by R s the resistance of the discharging circuit. In this case we can write this down simplistically as V C O by R s e to the power of minus T by R s C. So, energy dissipated across the inter electrode gap is given by half C V square 
and in this case the V is corresponding to the break down voltage of the medium we call it V B and so W D the total amount of energy dissipated across the gap is half C V B square V B is breakdown voltage as V C T is equal to V C 0 1 minus e to the power of minus T by R C C remember the charging part of the circuit where this equation had come. Therefore, we can say from this particular equation the time T can be computed as R C C natural log of 1 minus 1 minus V C T by V 0. And so, frequency of the discharging circuit is just the time inverse, and so therefore, the frequency is 1 by RCC 1 divided by this whole term ln 1 minus VCT by V0. where V C T is nothing but the breakdown voltage V B as we have already seen before in the last illustration. So, the minimum resistance R C that will result in uh, a control of the process without the formation of any arcing as such is known as the critical resistance for this particular circuit. And so, the critical value of resistance corresponding to the no arcing condition what typically depend on the inductance of the discharging circuit and supposing if the discharging circuit is purely inductive in nature. the critical resistance R minimum can be written down as the total amount of inductance of the discharging circuit per unit the capacitance the central capacitance value C. However, the discharging circuit is hardly pure inductive. And therefore, it is critical to have a resistance which is at least thirty times. 
the r minimum value as shown here okay so 30 root l by c is the operating point for the resistance corresponding to no arcing condition so in a nutshell we have kind of seen that uh, the relaxation the resistance capacitance relaxation circuit is limited by the resistance of the charging side uh, and uh, in most of the cases it is around 30 times uh, the root of L by C, L is a inductance of the discharging circuit and C is the capacitance, the central capacitance between the charging and discharging circuit. So, um, in case of machining steels uh, there are certain conventions and there are certain uh, correlational data which are followed by for estimating uh, a real relationship between the material removal rate and the amount of power that is uh, delivered on to the workpiece by the EDM system. And so, one such relationship which is very commonly used is uh, mathematically Q equals 27.4 W to the power of 1.54 and this is purely empirical based on experiments. Uh, the various parameters that are used in the experiments here are Q uh, is the removal rate. Typically it is uh, in millimeters per minute, millimeter cube per minute volume per unit time of material removal and W is the power delivered or the input power you can say on the relaxation side the, the, the charging side of the circuit in kilowatts. So, such relationships are very often used in uh, uh, EDM processes which would also help us to understand and design uh, the RC circuits or the relaxation circuits for feeding an EDM tool. So, do a numerical problem uh, based on that as illustrated here that in a uh, electric discharge drilling process of a 10 mm square hole uh, in a low carbon steel plate of thickness about 5 mm. Uh, the brass tool and kerosene are used as uh, kerosene is the dielectric, uh, brass is the tool. The resistance and capacitance uh, of the relaxation circuit that have been designed are given as 50 ohms and 10 microfarads respectively. And we are also indicating or, or it is also indicated what the supply voltage is, the order of the supply voltage is about 200 volts and uh, you maintain a gap uh, between the tool and the workpiece in a manner. Uh, so, that at 150 volts the breakdown happens. Okay. So, you can see here the breakdown takes place as 150 volts that is how you estimate the gap and you have to estimate how much time is needed for drilling this hole. So, one way of looking at it is that since the work material is steel here. we can use uh, the equation that was talked about earlier for steel Q equal to 27.4 W to the power of 1.54 for MRR estimation. And uh, the W of course, needs to be indicated in kilowatts uh, that is the um, assumption that we made in the last uh, empirical equation. And so, therefore, we have to really calculate what is the energy being discharged. We already know that the energy being delivered by the capacitor C, the breakdown side is given by uh, half C V B square, where V B is the breakdown voltage. And uh, this breakdown voltage has already been illustrated here in this example as 150 volts or the capacitance of 10 microfarads. And this becomes equal to half times of 10, 10 to the power of minus 6 times of square of 150 is 0.113 joule and the cycle time in this case is found by T C uh, and the equation that was discussed earlier is R C times of C log of V 0 by V 0 minus V d, V d is the discharge voltage 
and this is log to the base e. So, this becomes equal to 50 times of 10 10 to the power of minus 6 the capacitance times of log to the base e of the operating voltage which is taken as 200 volts in this example uh, divided by V d minus V o which is about 50 volts in this particular case. So, this corresponds to a time of about 7 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds. So, once this time is known we should be able to find out uh, how much power uh, is being delivered as the average power input is W equals 0 0.113 joules the energy um, that has been discharged by the ED machine uh, divided by 7 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds and this power is in kilowatts. So, it is basically 10 to the power of minus 3 kilowatts which makes it 0 0.16 0 0.16 kilowatt and using the equation that we had uh, discussed about mild steel particularly MRR uh, can be represented as 27.4 times of this value of W in kilowatts to the power of 1.54 in millimeter cube per minute. So, this is an estimation of what would be the material removal rate. Uh, this uh, in our case comes out to be equal to 1.633 millimeter cube per minute. We also know by virtue of uh, the question that the total amount of material that needs to be removed is calculated as about 500 millimeter cube this can be geometrically done uh, the dimensions of the hole the thickness of the sheet etcetera are all provided in the question. And so therefore, the time uh, required to complete this machining operation comes out to be equal to 500 by 1.633 that is 306 minutes. So, you can estimate the rate of an EDM process uh, and particularly the rate of material removal and realize that uh, in about 306 minutes you can actually uh, just be able to drill a very small hole uh, on a thickness of the sheet which is about 5 millimeters. So, in comparison to any conventional process uh, this process of course, is a slow process, but then EDM has an advantage that uh, you can work uh, using some of the alloys uh, where probably conventional machining may not be that helpful. In this particular case as you see there is a low carbon steel plate which is being drilled, uh, which sometimes uh, is very challenging uh, in the conventional machining when it comes to tool designing etcetera for the particular uh, surface. Also uh, this is of course, a regular topology, but then if the topology is very complex um, correct profile matching of the conventional machining side on a CNC or some other setup becomes uh, absolutely complex. And so, EDM can uh, work as a very good tool in those illustrations, although the time of machining may be a little higher rate of material remover may be slower. So, let us now look at some of the other important aspects, some of the machining trends with the different parameters uh, uh, that we have discussed so far. So, here in this particular slide we are illustrating the variation of the material removal rate Q with respect to different parameters like the resistance of the charging circuit, the mean current I. In this particular instance it is the capacitance C of the, uh, the relaxation circuit and then of course, the variation of MRR with respect to the spark gap. So, as we already know the equation for material removal rate had been earlier defined as uh, to be proportional to this term uh, V d square divided by log to the base E V 0 by V 0 minus V d. 
and uh, Q was found as k times of half V d square uh, C times of nu, uh, where nu is the frequency of uh, generation of the spark half uh, C V d square is the total amount of discharge energy that is needed by the IDM process and of course, Q is proportional to this both these terms together. So, if we look at the various aspects in these two equations, we will have different trends. For example, uh, as you can see it is a inverse variation of resistance. So, with an increase in resistance the MRR goes down uh, obviously from this equation and uh, as we already discussed before that the relaxation circuit is supposed to, to have a minimum critical resistance. Uh, particularly as far as the discharge gap is concerned, because uh, if uh, supposing the, uh, the resistance is very small, uh, there may be a arcing instead of sparking uh, and it may be a continuous phenomena. Uh, arcing instead of sparking, which is uh, not really conducive uh, to the EDM process. So, it starts at a minimum value of resistance the critical resistance uh, which needs to be necessarily maintained in the inter electrode gap. Uh, so, that a successful EDM operation can be carried out. Uh, one of the reasons why if you look at this trend here uh, the range of resistance really starts R C R onwards or uh, critical resistance onwards and as the resistance increases material removal rate goes down. Similar uh, kind of trend can be discussed for the capacitance. Uh, here for example, in this uh, equation 2, let us call this equation 1, uh, this as equation 2. Uh, the Q is proportional to capacitance, so pretty much it should uh, vary linearly. Uh, however, in an actual experimental uh, setup, uh, the material removal rate is found to vary close to linear. Uh, not exactly linear with respect to the capacitance. Let us look at uh, the variation of material removal rate with respect to mean current I as uh, can be found in this graph here. Uh, if you can see that there are different operating voltages uh, of uh, V O 3, V O 2 and V O 1 with an interrelationship mentioned at the top left corner of the graph here the operating voltage V O 3 is the highest uh, followed by V O 2 followed by V O 1. And uh, as is obvious V D or discharge voltage is actually equal to 72 percent of the operating voltage which for maximum power transfer which we had actually calculated and uh, in detail shown earlier. And so therefore, uh, if the V operating is more the uh, the discharge voltage also subsequently rises uh, actually it is a uh, cause and effect which is the cause and which is the effect. So, basically discharge voltage is the independent parameter which is uh, dependent on various parameters uh, or various various properties of the gap the dielectric of the gap dielectric constant of the gap or the gap itself uh, and therefore, V d is really that point of voltage which starts the discharge. Uh, and so, um, the V O has to be set in accordance with this V D and therefore, if V O is higher it automatically means that we are operating at a higher gap discharge voltage V D and V D being proportional to Q uh, means that higher V operating meaning thereby higher V discharge would have a higher machining rate or material removal rate in comparison to a lower operating voltage V O 1. Thus, this different range. So, uh, the V thus the thus this characteristics of uh, different V operating on different straight lines uh, from 1 to 3 as can be seen in this particular graph. One more important point is that uh, as the mean current increases it automatically means that the, um, the discharge voltage also is increasing, because it is uh, really a function of the gap resistance. And uh, therefore, with an increase in mean current as you can see the material removal rate is also increasing. 
Um, the other important factor in this uh, characteristics is uh, how the material removal rate varies with the spar gap. And um, if you may recall this equation number 2, there are two components of this equation. One is this half V d square C component, which is the spark energy and the other is nu, which is the spark frequency. And uh, when it comes to optimizing the energy versus frequency, the following things may be thought of in a physical way in the EDM machine. So, as the gap, the inter electrode gap is lesser, uh, you need lesser amount of discharge voltage, uh, because uh, the gap is very small. The electric field, which is uh, causative of the electrical breakdown is dependent on V d by inter electrode distance d and d being small V d can also be uh, reasonably small for the discharge to occur or the breakdown field to reach. However, if the distance is small uh, there is a tendency of the spark frequency to increase and uh, although the V d is smaller at a lower electrode distance or lower spark gap as uh, you may better call it the frequency is extremely high. On the other hand, if the electrode gap increases, uh, you need a higher discharge voltage V d to cause the electrical field breakdown. And uh, because the spark has to travel through all this distance, uh, which is now higher in comparison to what was before, the spark frequency suitably reduces. So, it is essentially an interplay between these components as uh, shown here, the spark energy and the spark frequency. So, if spark, so let us call it 1 and 2 respectively. And uh, the reason why uh, this uh, material removing, uh, removal rate uh, with respect to the spark gap is like a um, plateauing curve as illustrated in this particular diagram here is that on the left portion of the optimum gap that means, on this particular port, the, the frequency dominate because of lower gap. And on the right side of the optimum gap, uh, the, the V d increases because of increased gap and the energy dominates the frequency term. And so, because it is an interplay, um, sometimes the frequency is uh, higher and it, it increases uh, the material removal rate, because it is dominating. And in the other hand, if the energy may not be that, uh, you know the rate of increase of energy may not be that high in comparison to the frequency, it leads to the uh, fall down of the material removal rate as shown by these set of arrows on the right side of the optimum spark gap. So, essentially we can summarize uh, all these uh, by saying that when the spark gap is a small discharge voltage is also small though the frequency is high resulting in a high MRR. When the gap is too large the frequency nu reduces tremendously although discharge voltage V d increases.
therefore there is an optimum gap for which MRR is the highest. So, we have more or less discussed about the general characteristics of how the machining rate or the material removal rate in an EDM process would vary with several process parameters. The other important issue uh, is about uh, how surface finish um, and machining accuracy can be dependent on some of these parameters like for example, the capacitance or the operating voltage and uh, for uh, doing that let us just see some of the important aspects to be considered uh, in this particular slide. So, as you know since the material in EDM uh, arises from formation uh, material removal in EDM arises from formation of the craters uh, due to sparks essentially it is uh, obvious that larger crater sizes uh, especially uh, the crater depth uh, result in rough surfaces. So, uh, as we talked before about thermal energy and the way the depth of melting temperature reaches on a crater, uh, if the depth of melting temperature is higher the roughness would go up and vice versa for obvious reasons, uh, because you will have a deeper crater and a crater by crater removal of the material over the uh, whole surface. So, the crater size uh, if we really look at mathematically uh, and we had done this earlier this mainly depends on uh, the spark energy uh, and uh, if you are releasing this energy as a packet with a high intensity uh, obviously the crater will be deeper and uh, vice versa if the energy delivered is smaller and probably the frequency is larger uh, then the crater would have a lower depth and obviously uh, from an engineering standpoint intuitively one can think that higher energy deliverance corresponds to a rough surface uh, and a lower energy deliverance corresponds to a smooth surface uh, as far as machining quality is concerned. So, it controls uh, the quality of the surface. So, the average roughness uh, is illustrated by root mean square uh, roughness and this mainly depends on two important aspects one is the capacitance and another is the operating voltage. I think we have already mentioned this n number of times before that uh, the op the q r the q the material removal rate is really proportional to the half c v d square and the frequency. And so as one can see here easily uh, if c is more the material removal is uh, more meaning thereby that half C V D square is essentially that energy packet that we are talking about during one uh, EDM exposure or one EDM spark. So, if half C V D square is more uh, it automatically means that the energy density which is being delivered onto the material is much higher and the crater size would be greater in nature. And if this uh, is lesser uh, meaning thereby uh, that you have a lower operating voltage on which you are operating. Uh, the the half C V D square would again in a way depend on that lower operating voltage and the surface roughness would be uh, lesser or surface would be smoother. So, here for example, V O 3 is a higher operating voltage uh, greater than V O 2 greater than V O 1. You can see all the surface roughness trends vary with capacitance as uh, high roughness on the higher voltage operating voltage characteristic and a lower roughness uh, on the lower operating voltage characteristic. And the variation is more or less proportional um, although there are certain parts uh, towards the very beginning where the trend is not that linear uh, because probably uh, there is still not a completely established charging discharging precedence or relationship between both the circuitries both the circuits and that is how the uh, the average surface roughness H R M S varies with respect to capacitance. Also you can think of it as by looking at that uh, if you may recall earlier we had talked about 
the crater depth at C, which can be expressed in terms of spark energy uh, released. And uh, we arrived upon a uh, formulation where this crater depth was empirically determined in terms of K 1 times of spark energy to the power of 0 0.33 millimeters. And so, if half C V D square is more obviously E is more and H C is more. So, there is also from a mathematical standpoint some relationship between the crater depth and the spark energy. So, uh, copper when used as a work material experimentally yields this k 1 value to be approximately 4 and you can accordingly find out and estimate what is the surface roughness h r m s based on the material properties and the energy deliverance onto the material. The other important aspect therefore, uh, is that if I really uh, take E to be half C V D square and try to formulate this empirical relationship, it results into this expression 0 0.78 uh, k e to c to the power of 0 0.33 v d to the power of 0 0.66 uh, k is again that constant of proportionality, uh, which in case of copper was 4 uh, observed to have the value 4. And uh, thus the relationship how uh, the h c varies with respect to capacitance and also v d. Uh, the discharge voltage, which is again a somehow a function and closely related to the operating voltage characteristic. So, the dependence of surface energy on pulse energy E and the comparison of uh, surface finish with that obtained by conventional processes are now quite well studied. Uh, a lot of research has gone in this area and a lot of studies have been made in uh, determining a suitable relationship between the rate of material removal and the quality of uh, the surface finish. Uh, however, uh, these are all empirical in nature uh, and uh, a very dependable uh, kind of relationship uh, has not really emerged so far uh, between the surface finish and the spark energy. Uh, it works well in case of combinations of different materials. So, in particularly case of steels uh, you have a very well defined relationship. Uh, how H R M S is related to the material removal rate, although it is quite empirical in nature, but then uh, there is an equation H R M S equal to 1.11 Q to the power of 0 0.384, uh, where H R M S is the surface roughness, the average surface, the R M S root mean square roughness uh, in microns, and Q is in millimeter cube per minute. Uh, generally, one more aspect that we have illustrated before is that if there is a force circulation of dielectric in an EDM tank, it results in smoothening of the surface by a lot of diffusive forces uh, interplayed by the moving dielectric over the surface. So, it carries away the melt, distributes the temperature uh, and so therefore, overall there is a surface smoothness which comes because of higher circulation rate. So, let us look now at uh, the uh, more dependable relationship between surface uh, finish and pulse energy as uh, illustrated in uh, this process here. And you can see the spark energy uh, on the right y axis here in joules for the various uh, operations uh, like uh, electro discharge turning, electro discharge milling, boring, reaming, grinding, lapping, honing, polishing and super finishing. And uh, you can see that there are two different regimes of roughnesses for each. Uh, one of them is uh, the roughing uh, regime, where there is a rough cut finishing, uh, which has a lower uh, value of roughness, smoother surface. And this describes the H R M S in microns. So, for example, corresponding to a pulse energy of uh, uh, 0 0.1 uh, joule, uh, you can get an average roughness of around <coughs> close to uh, 
0.01 microns <coughs> when you talk about electro discharge polishing processes and as i has about 0.05 microns so this is the operating range <coughs> of the roughness for uh, 0.1 joule energy the other side if you talk about turning operations so in turning you can get a rough uh, range of roughness varying from 25 to 100 microns uh, whereas corresponding to a really high pulse energy of 0.9 joules and uh, then if the pulse energy is slightly uh, reduced uh, you have a finished turning finished electro discharge turning operation uh, where uh, the roughness varies from 1.6 to 12 uh, microns the RMS root mean square roughness. So, that is how you can read this particular figure this is an ensemble of the different electro discharge processes with respect to the roughening and finishing roughnesses and pulse energy. So, let us uh, close this uh, uh, lecture in the interest of time uh, by uh, all this uh, analysis about roughness and energy. In the next lecture we will start from uh, slightly newer topic of uh, e-beam machining. Thank you.